Hello everyone, welcome to this, the latest episode of Book Time with Elvis with me, Mark. Um, I'm just doing a kind of short summary update video uh, regarding the things I'm reading this month. Um, I haven't really planned it out, I just thought, you know, I haven't made a video for a few days, I'll just jump on in there and, and, and say, you know, kind of what I'm uh, doing and how I'm getting on um, through the first four days or so of October. Um, I'm really enjoying my uh, October reads um, and the two Victorian books that I'm reading. Um, one of them for part of our Humorous Book Club, uh, Humorous Book of the Month Club, rather, the rather uh, Diary of a Nobody by George and Weedon Grossmith. Really funny. Um, I started reading it yesterday and I read half of it already. It is quite a small book, but it's it's just it's just nice. It's just a nice little um, fake diary of normal middle class Victorian life, and uh, yeah, I chuckled out loud at a few parts of that, and that's uh, that's kind of good light hearted fun, and I hope to finish it soon. I'm almost finished another book called the uh, It's Not Victorian. Um, it would be, what would it be? Hmm, I think it was published 1750, so is that Georgian? Yeah. Uh, which is The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. Um, because I'm going to try and do a kind of gothic uh, read-a-thon uh, with Vin at uh, Revenant Reads, and he'd already read that, so uh, I think it was the earliest book on his list, so I'm kind of just playing catch-up with that before we move on. But it's again a small book and shouldn't take me very long and it's quite good as well actually um and and you know the good thing as i say is it is quite short uh the other book i'm reading uh, the other victorian book i'm reading for october is uh lorna doon by rd blackmore and i'm in a fantastic group for this and we said we'd read two pages uh two chapters per day uh, during uh, October. I've kind of gone a little bit beyond that. Um, I'm coming up to chapter 11, I think, and it's fantastic. I mean, it takes a little bit of getting into because the language is quite flowery and, um, you know, it seems a bit disjointed at times, but then that fits in, I think, nicely with our narrator. Uh, who's also the main character, but he's kind of looking back on his life. He's he's at the time of um, when he's speaking, he's an old man. So I think that kind of fits in nicely with it. But there's a lot of humour um, as well as uh, a bit of tragedy even early on. Uh, but I do like some of the stories and some of the characters. They are, they are really great. Um, I don't want to say too much about it because I am quite far ahead. Well, not far ahead, but a little bit further ahead. Than most people in the group, so I don't want to give any spoilers, but I'll probably do a roundup um, of the. I think we said we'll check in every Friday, so on Friday I'll probably do a roundup of the chapters that should have been uh, read up to by that point, so I can talk more about that. Um, I'm also in a reading group uh, for uh, Mary Beard's SPQR. Um, and that's fantastic, but then again, Mary Beard is fantastic, so uh, if you haven't read her, you should check her out. She's a wonderful historian um, and uh, an all-round fantastic lady, um, and uh, she writes, you know, she writes really well. She's not patronising at all, and um, her history of Rome so far is really enjoyable. I'm, I'm about 70, 75 pages into it. Uh, we're supposed to read, I think, 125 pages a week uh, for that, which is which is manageable and certainly doesn't feel like a chore with the way she writes. Uh, she's very interesting the way she starts it off. She starts off talking about the <clears throat> Catiline conspir conspiracy and the role of Cicero. And uh, she spends a lot of time kind of talking about Cicero um, and uh, even kind of uh, brings him into the second chapter when she talks about the foundation myth of Rome with um, Remus and Romulus and uh, Aeneas and all these things and um, yeah she makes it she makes it very interesting 
um, as well. And she said she was going to take as her end point for this history uh, some time in the second century uh, AD when all uh, inhabitants of the Roman Empire received citizenship and I guess that's a that's a fair place to stop so in total I think she's taking on about a thousand uh, a thousand years uh, which is pretty good still for a single volume uh, history uh, I do have a few things uh, oh yeah one one surprise one which uh, I accidentally stumbled upon uh, and I started reading and then of course I was drawn into it is um, Gore Vidal's book Creation and I'm really really enjoying that that's uh, I didn't know anything about it at all I just kind of downloaded it and thought oh and, you know kind of looks like it might be interesting and started reading it and I, I was hooked that's all about um, the grandson of Zoroastra um, you know of the of the fire religion uh, of ancient ancient Persia um, and it's kind of a history of Greece and Persia, um, and it starts off actually with the character attending, um, a recital of, uh, Herodotus's histories by Herodotus himself, and, um, he's not too keen on it because, uh, he says it only says one, you know, the one point of view from the Greek point of view, and of course it's not not all right and that kind of stuff. But um, it's entertaining as well, and um, I'm yeah, I'm enjoying that. So uh, it's a big book though, so it might take me a while to get through it because I do also have a few hangovers from last month. Um, I need to finish the Name of the Rose, which is fantastic, but um, I don't know why. I don't know why I just didn't crack on with it really. This is the problem having too much on the go at once. I'm trying to like narrow it down, um, you know, over the course of like a couple of days, just one or two books only. And then, you know, that's why I read ahead, for example, in Lorna Doom, because I thought I can give myself a break if I want to and concentrate on something else. But the problem is, it's just so good that I've been drawn into it uh, further and further. Uh, but yeah, this the things I need to finish, The Name of the Rose uh, and um, Confederacy of Dancers, which I'm almost finished. Uh, but I really should get that knocked out as quickly as possible because it, I don't like having things left over from previous months, but I do have a few other things. The rest of the things that were left over from July and August, uh, I've decided to move to December. December is going to be a month of uh, kind of uh, clearing house and uh, just finishing all the things that I haven't finished which I should have finished. So a few things are on pause now until December. Um, and then hopefully I can end the year with a clean slate as it were. So there we go. Uh, otherwise, yeah, it's a Monday. It's a beautiful day. I have to say it really is lovely. Um, I've just come home from teaching uh, at my school in the mountains, in the Eagle Mountains. Um, and it was, uh, it was a nice day. I had the uh, English with the first class, so that's a bunch of six-year-olds in two different groups, and uh, that's always a lot of fun, albeit uh, rather energetic couple of um, couple of lessons. You know, I'm sure anyone who has six-year-old children can attest to it, but of course they don't have um, you know ten or eleven six-year-old children at once to deal with. But hey, that's why I get the big bucks, right? So. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, I'll leave you with just a little clip that I took this morning of me uh, driving on the bus to and from school, and you can see a little bit of the uh, of the countryside. It's, they're not very long, just a couple of seconds. But anyway, that's my little video that I made, I guess, for the sake of making one, you know, in case you missed me. Uh, and I'll be back later in the week with some more kind of uh, detailed uh, updates. So take care, everyone. See you all soon. All the best. Bye.